Welcome back to NTV Weekend Edition. Now, in 2017, President Yoweri Museveni appended his signature to the Presidential Commitment and Campaign Program against further transmission of HIV and AIDS epidemic by launching the Presidential First Track Initiative to end AIDS, a pandemic, AIDS as a pandemic public health threat in Uganda by 2030. And with that ongoing, the Ministry of Health and Line Partners announced that a new HIV drug regimen will be rolled out as the first line of treatment for people living with HIV due to its effectiveness. Tonight we discuss this and more with the Director General of the Uganda AIDS Commission, Dr. Nelson Musova. Doctor, yes. welcome to NTV tonight. Thank you. All right, so let's start with understanding uh, the new drug and why at this time? Well, as you've indicated, uh, one of the five points in the president's uh, fast track initiative yeah. was uh, uh, rolling out test and treat. And as part of the test and treat, uh, the new guidelines is that as soon as somebody is tested and they are HIV positive, they are started on uh, treatment immediately. So recently, a new drug has been found uh, that is found to be, it's called DTG. Yeah. It's more effective. It has less side effects. Uh, it is easier to swallow. It also costs less, cheaper than, you know, the previous combination. So it has been recommended by WHO, and Uganda is already, uh, you know, starting on rolling it out. And uh, the plans are that uh, by end of December 2019, this drug should have been rolled out to the whole country. Yeah. All right. And you do say, you know, it's... Uh well cheap and all the all the advantages about it but you know anything that has an advantage probably has a disadvantage are there any known you know side effects to this drug yes that is true uh, because uh, in fact uh, already uh, WHO has uh, issued a caution because an ongoing study in Botswana found that uh, if this drug is taken by women of childbearing age mm. it could have an effect on the baby especially in the first uh, eight weeks of pregnancy so this drug is recommended for you know <coughs> adults mainly yeah. uh, 15 years and above uh, so children below 15 it's not recommended for them but it's also recommend not recommended for women <coughs> who are of childbearing age unless they are on contraceptives of permanent nature so that you know there is that side effect uh, despite all the positive things that I've said about it it has a negative effect where it could cause uh, a defect on the spine of, of the developing fetus within within the mother so and yet this is the category that needs this drug most so that it's not uh, HIV is not transmitted to the newborn yeah but we give that caution that uh, mothers uh, of reproductive productive age should should not uh, you know start on this drug unless advised by the health worker okay and you know statistics of course from studies that have been done including the UDHS uh, of 2016 you know shows the prevalence is coming down yeah. generally national prevalence yes. to about 6.2 yes currently but it is still high amongst females between 14 to 64 years mm. yet the reports show that females actually have, you know, a good turn up when it comes to health seeking, uh, health services seeking behavior. Mm -hmm. Why is it this way? It's that problem is there partly because of the men. Again, when you go back to the presidential fast track, uh, the first point is to engage men. Uh, so that, uh, you know, they, they are able to go and test. Men do not have a good health-seeking behavior. Yeah. They are not going for testing. And uh, on the other side, you'll find that men between the age of 45 to 49 showed the highest HIV prevalence of 14%. And it is these men who are, you know, getting in contact with the young girls between 15 and 24 mm. and passing on the HIV infection. So we are focusing on men, urging them to go and test and start on treatment and uh, accompanying their partners uh, you know so that uh, they can benefit from the new services in the Ministry of Health has now designed a new strategy where they are seeking out men finding them in the workplace and and where they 
hung out so that they extend uh, the services to them. You know, when you talk about uh, that kind of intervention, it also brings us to the fact of, uh, you know, understanding that 100, about 122 new infections registered every day mm -hmm. is still a very big number. And, you know, if you do, a total is about eight, eight, 80,000 cases mm -hmm. registered every year mm -hmm. uh, of new infections. How are we going to bring these numbers down? Again, what are the targets, apart from men? Because mm -hmm. uh, you told us what you're going to do with men, but we still have children. Children yes. have a relatively higher number uh, when you look at the new cases being registered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, the, the, that is right, that we still, despite you know, the successes that we've seen, we still uh, have uh, a high rate of new HIV infections, actually 50,000 uh, every year. And uh, the, what we are doing is partly the 90-90-90 targets that you hear about. We would like at least 90% of all people living with HIV to test and know their HIV status. And 90% of those who have tested and are HIV positive should be started on treatment. And would like 90, it's not enough to start on treatment. Those who start on treatment should take it consistently because when you take your treatment consistently, it's of benefit to you as an individual. You know, you lower your, you, you, you don't get opportunistic infections. You, ro you lower your viral load, you are also less likely to transmit the infection to your partner. So treatment in itself is, is prevention. And we like those targets of 90, 90, 90 to be achieved by the year 2020, so that in the long run we are able to end AIDS as a public health threat by 2030. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, 2030 is not so long from today. Yes. But if I also do quote statistics here, the HIV burden currently is at 1.3%. Uh, about 1.3 million people yes. living with HIV. That's right. And you know, they, they also further show that about 1.1 are on antiretroviral treatment. Mm. This means that there is about 184,135 people living with HIV who are not on treatment. Yes. Are they the hindrance to you know, achieving the goals? That is right. You've pointed out that very clearly. There are you know, that close to 200,000 people out there. Uh, many of them do not know their HIV status, so they are moving around. Uh, most likely, those who have partners are passing on that infection to their partners. So we really urge everyone, it begins with you as an individual, to check your HIV status, to make sure that your partner, your spouse, uh, your sibling, your offspring, you know, are aware of their HIV status so that as much as possible because once you can only close the tap yeah. of new HIV infections if each of us know their status and they aim to protect not just ourselves but those who are who are next to us either as partners or as uh, as members within the same community when we started out the campaigns you know to really really combat HIV and AIDS uh, we had campaigns like ABC you know abstain uh, use a condom or be faithful. Yes. But, you know, nowadays things have changed. Campaigns for 1990-90 include testing and treating uh, once you're found to have HIV. Uh, we have a problem of, you know, uh, areas that have a high prevalence, uh, no matter what the national prevalence is. Mm. Areas are around, you know, the, the fishing community. Mm. We have busy towns which have, you know, transitional sex. And these are the areas, of course, that still show uh, the weaknesses in our campaigns. Yes. What are you planning as a commission to, you know, do for such communities? Again, working with our partners, we still actually use uh, targeted interventions because not each of these interventions work for every category. If you're talking about abstinence, abstinence, then you're referring to the young people. If you're still in school, if you've not yet gotten a partner, then you shouldn't engage in sex. And do they want to? St do they still want to abstain? 
if you give them the message and show them, of course, a lot of the young people now mm -hmm. did not see the HIV of the 90s mm -hmm. and the early 2000s, so they are not aware. So we, we are going out, you know, give them information, show them the, the, the dangers of engaging in HIV, the risks, so that they are aware and they can keep themselves safe. But also, like you've pointed out, there are targeted interventions for yeah. groups like, uh, you know, the, the fisher folks, uh, you know, they, they, they live a very risky uh, lifestyle and, and uh, there are interventions around the lake areas, the shores that are targeting them. We have groups like the commercial sex workers at very high risk of contracting but also passing on the, the HIV infection. So again, for those groups, the designed interventions are, are very targeted, they are, they are specific, they are even because you'll find services that we call moonlighting, very specific organizations taking services to them in their places where they are working. I want us to conclude in a few seconds on the progress of you know the five point program for uh, the president, which included institutional effectiveness for well coordinated multi sector response and of course financial sustainability, which leads us to drug shortage and we also got to know that you know you will be rationing septrin, which is key for people living with HIV. Uh, it's true that, uh, you know, the, again, with the changes in policy and the introduction of test and treat, our studies have found that uh, not everyone needs septrin. Yeah. Septrin is usually taken to, you know, s prevent optimistic infections. So if you're on your, on your ARVs, you're taking them well, and your viral load is low, you do not need septrin. So septrin now is reserved for, uh, you know, the women who are pregnant, the children under 15, and those who are just being initiated on treatment whose viral load has not yet been lowered. So the rationing is really not a negative thing. It is a principled thing so that it is only given to those who need it. Uh, in terms of um, progress on the, on the presidential fast track initiative, we are also, you know, following up our own processes to improve domestic financing. The Minister of Finance has issued a guideline to all the public sector to contribute 0.1 percent of their total budget to, you know, HIV AIDS activities uh, for for each of the sectors relevant to the things that they do. But also, we are ensuring that uh, every department has uh, a focal person for HIV, has a committee that coordinates that these committees come together and plan. We've gone out to all districts and sensitized the leaders. We are working with cultural leaders and religious leaders to take out the message to the young people and, and to the groups that are at risk. And uh, we are seeing increased sensitization and uh, young people taking up the message very actively and we should be able to, you know, to, to be able to, to meet our targets as we had planned. All right. Thank you very much, Doctor, for joining us this evening. Dr. Nelson Musoba is the director Director General for the Uganda AIDS Commission. That was Talk of the Nation. Let's take a short break and we'll return with sport. Let me tell you a story about a man I know, a man called Bosco. 